call Jamaican girl them dancing, them dancing. Hey, watch the girl them a dance, them no out of them timing. Boy, them never out of them timing. Sexy girl them no out of them timing. No, no. Nate Kai Bright, popularly called Tenosaur. At the tender age of 19, he ruled the dance hall scene. Clive Bright, tenor saw, died in Texas, USA, under tragic and suspicious circumstances in August 1988. Described as one of a kind, he was the youth who used the Jamaican folk culture and the religion to produce reggae songs. He was here with me, you know, and because I am a really strict mother of my children, he went away down by my husband home because when my husband separated and he left me and go down there. And he wanted us to go about this singing business, but he was afraid that me would prevent him because me would want him to come into home certain time and don't sleep out and things like those. He went there and while he was down there for a few months, he keep coming every coming every Sunday anyhow, and he would get his clothes and his money and his meal and. He went away sometime when him come on Sunday, I would sit and talk with him and say, Clive, why you don't come home? Why you staying down there? Why you prefer down there? And you know, he never want to give me the reason. But I did not know that this was his reason. It was then about some time after, I understand, somebody come and said to me that, Miss Cherry, you don't hear Clive have a song on the radio singing. I say, I laugh and I say, we get that from, and the person said, yes. We hear Clive was singing, and this song was roll call, when the roll is called up yonder. And then it was like a day after I hear the song myself on the radio, and I couldn't believe it. You know, I begin to laugh in my heart and say, what? You mean to tell me this was his plan I did not know? But because he had the mind from him, he was small, growing him, loved to sing, and everywhere you take him and him, they would put him in program and they would sing, they cheer him and say, once ago I was at church, one, once an evangelist said to me, Sister Cherry, this boy can't sing, you know, it's a pity he won't behave himself, because whenever I go to church, he would yeah, fight yeah. and quarrel on the back with that little Little boy, and they would put him to knee long, you know, meanwhile, so it's going on. So she always been saying to me, him, and the thing about the boy, him have a sweet piece of advice. A deep religious background, and the fact that his father lived in the country or rural Jamaica, while his mother lived in town, gave him the experiences and the tools to make his type of reggae music. And when I return, a long belly man come down me by so. Hey, them want to reap where them never sow. The sun can no sing so, it no sing so. Goodbye, all my friends. I love you all to my heart and soul. Starting with roll call on 45 RPM, and followed by a string of others which included Fever, Who's Gonna Help Me Praise Jehovah, How Water Go a Pumpkin Belly. Nineteen eighty five was his year, and his songs gave him a meteoric rise to stardom. Taken from the lips of a mother who loved him well, Tennessee was a kind person and one whose instant success did not adversely affect him. You could see the, 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 the goodness of life shining him. He would come in and if, if even if I fuss in the womb, he would say, okay, mommy, finished. You know, and him, him try to live down everything. Him, him just try to make everybody now begin to feel him at home and happy for him. And whenever he comes in, you would see a lot of crowd out the gate there. 
all the men them from over the, the year of them here that them was here. You could see them coming in sometime in car and getting no sleep. And he would take him last cent out of his pocket to give to everyone. Sometimes I have to say to him, Clive, no matter what you have, you know, and you do it like this, you, you go and finish. You can't give to everybody. He said, Mommy, why, Mommy? We know what was suffering, you know. And these people need and want. And God help you and you have something. You have to give to them. I mean, him treat people as if he was a man about 55. Tennessee came into the music world under the tutelage of veteran international reggae singer and current record producer, Sugar Minot. One morning about six o'clock, I wake up and look outside. Say, look, you'd sit on a stone and say, boy, somebody sent him here that I was promoting youth and music and he had some music, you know? Well, his style was, was, was a nice style. His voice sound very unique to me, so I thought that he had a big chance, you know? be a big star so he started singing on the youth promotion sound system because you know we have a sound system that try to popularize the youth <laughs> you know he had some good lyrics and the first song that made a big impression on, on the public was a song called pumpkin belly which was originally done at a dub plate but later on was put out by prince jammies because youth promotion we generally recruit the youth them you know and put them out so that was one of the first recording and roll call for George Fang. Then the, the album Fever was produced by me. One of his greatest hits, Ring the Alarm, Another Sound is Dying, was composed by him while on stage in 1985. There at the New Kingston Entertainment Center, with the four biggest songs vying for the award of excellence. With two sounds out of the way, King Jammy's High Five was locked in musical battle with Sugar Minot's Youth Man promotion and tenor saw at the control. From out of nowhere, to steal the show, tenor saw produced the lyrics, four big sound in a one big lawn. This song brought the curtain down on the event and gave his song the title. In two weeks, the record was on the road and became an instant success. In 1986, Tenosaur, after numerous travels throughout the world, left Jamaica, never again to return to our shores. Once when he was leaving to go there, he said, well, Elaine got pregnant, then he was going to, to see what happening. This was the last time when I know he went up on his own. You know, and then he keep calling me, and I was trying to find out from him. How was everything? And he was say, Mommy, everything is OK. And I go into a different state to do some show. I soon come home. You know, but he always keep in and out. He never settled. He always go back and forth from Jamaica to abroad. Returning home was not an easy decision, for he had become a father, and his family was living in America. While in New York, his adopted home, Tennessee concentrated more on stage shows rather than on recordings. What motivated him to depart from our shores? Well, I think that started with um, a deal with Blue Mountain Music, which was controlled by Lloyd Evans, you know. He did a tour with them, um, European and some in America. So I guess um, Lloyd Evans had good, I, um, desired to see him go further within music. So he was supposed to go there and get some vice training, you know, for further vice training and all things like that. But after being there, well, you know, maybe he liked the place, you know, and decided that he'd settle there for a while, you know. As far as my knowledge, maybe we, um, after that, deciding to stay there wasn't um, fitting to the plans of the company, Blue Mountain, maybe, you know? Do you know of Tennessee recording any music? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I personally work on an album with him for um, SKD Music in Miami, you know, which is, I know that will soon be coming out, because it hasn't been released as yet. He just had a song called Chill Out on the Black Echoes chart in, Amer in England, which did very well, because you know, he's, he's the kind of singer that don't, that don't sing a lot for every producer. He, he specializes, you know. 
So that's why you don't hear his music so much. But when he does sing, you know, he always comes with a good hit, good song, because most of the songs are hit, hit songs. He was like a state trotter. From town to cities, he traveled all over the USA, singing reggae songs. It was on one of these trips that the young tenor saw lost his life. The circumstances under which the young singer lost his life is unclear and froth with suspicion. He was found somewhere in a remote area in Texas with his head bashed in, his two legs broken. The autopsy report revealed that he had contracted bronchial pneumonia between the time of receiving injury to the time of death. This meant that he was out in the open suffering from injuries for hours, if not for days, before death finally came. Tennessee could have been killed by a swindler and murderer, or by a hit-and-run motorist. Some people are speculating that it could have been drug-related. The moral of this story is, however, that young singers need a manager, someone to look after their affairs, to know where they are going and to whom. In 1985, Tennessee received outstanding praises for his performances on Rockers, Dance Hall, Four Sounds Clash, and Sunsplash. He also received the JBC Certificate of Recognition for his contribution to the development of Jamaican music. Mrs. Dolores Elson's idol has been shattered. Her earth star has fled. She now consoled herself in the fact that in his short life, he made a significant contribution. Her whole life, she will now spend trying to know why he died. This is a song of goat and robbers. Oh, 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 o